Welcome to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow, a show where we inform, inspire, and empower our businesses, communities, and people just like you. Today on the show, we are talking about personal care services. And we have a guest on the show, Ms. Cindy Berry, who is the CEO of Honeybee's Personal Care Health Services. This is such an important topic to me because we're always looking for opportunities to help our loved ones, especially our vulnerable population. And that is something that her organization does. So we're gonna learn more about personal care services. So please help me welcome to the show, Cindy Barry. Welcome yes, to the show, Cindy. Thank you. thank you for having me. I am so excited that we're doing this show because there's so many people out there that are struggling Absolutely. yeah personally with needing help sometimes absolutely. afraid to ask for help sometimes not knowing where to at where to go to for the help absolutely absolutely so i wanted to to say because you say um that you consider your organization the family when you don't have family oh that sounded so <laughs> well, it's true. There are a lot of individuals out there that don't have family, mm -hmm. didn't get married, um, you know, and, you know, we get older. And as we get older, you know, we start needing assistance. So know? they have no support system. They don't have any support system. And that's what Honeybees wants to be mm -hmm. um, to everyone in our community, but especially to individuals that feel like they don't have anyone. Wow. Especially when they go down or you know, just need that extra help. <laughs> well, now this doesn't sound, and how, how old is this business? How old are Um. Well, believe it or not, I, I started it um, June of 2016. Wow. Now this doesn't sound like just work for you. It sounds like it's a calling. It is, it is. I've always, I'm very passionate. I love people. And um, I, I've been doing this for a while. I was explaining to someone earlier that wanted to know about my story. And um, I started, um, I had a daycare business and they kind of, when I transitioned over, it's kind of like they're very similar, you know, the difference is one is small people and then the other mm -hmm. is older individuals. Um, and so I basically transitioned and got into home um, health in the year of 2007 and worked with a few um, different companies out there. And it was this one young lady that um, I became really, really good friends with. Um, she's deceased now. Her name was Nina Abernathy, and she owned Tender Hands. And so basically she was killed in a tragic car accident in 2015, and I, I, I was just heartbroken. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was then that I decided, you know, to channel you know my energy into what she and i did together what so, an amazing story and that's why i started honeybees oh wow what an amazing story <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the services that you provide um well we provide personal um companion and respite care um we go into the homes of individuals like i was explaining to you earlier and some of the things that we do while we're there is we do light housekeeping, medication reminders, um, outings, assisting to any type of appointment, going out, um, providing grocery, you know, shopping, any, anything that they basically would need us to do. Um, um, we do meal preparations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these, you know, also assistance with ADLs, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, toileting and dressings and stuff like that so right. this is what we do for individuals um, and most of our clients are um, senior citizens but you know we work with consumers that are maybe disabled or you know in rehabilitation recovering from injury or illnesses mm -hmm. okay. so you probably see a lot of uh, different types of adults that are from 
early stages Alzheimer's to even later stages Alzheimer's and Absolutely. the caregivers are needing to turn to someone because they need help. Absolutely. They can't do it alone. And I've and I've I've been that because even though I'm the CEO of honeybees um i've actually been out in the field i've done the work and still as a ceo i still work with clients wow yes it's a calling yeah it's definitely a calling yeah. you have that connection with your clients it sounds like <laughs> yes absolutely absolutely so are you focused you know your specific geographic area is the hampton roads area williamsburg and the peninsula um i am hoping to expand oh. i am hoping to grow my business and you know get the um recognition out there you know for um honeybees so well you know one of the things uh, especially in our society we have a growing elderly population mm -hmm. so more and more people are turning older um and you have the baby boomers yes. you know yes, yes. <laughs> that are now on the scene and you know they're going to need some of that care absolutely so it's, it's going to get really really busy and the interesting thing is we haven't done enough to as a society to invest in our elderly care I we want to put people in nursing homes and i have nothing against nursing homes there is definitely a place for nursing homes mm -hmm. but that should not be the first you know idea that comes to mind is putting someone in a nursing absolutely home. and a lot of these individuals worked home um, hard they paid their homes off and they don't want to leave their home and this is the beauty, you know, I find in home health because we're able to go into the home and assist them and help them stay in their homes for as long as possible. And that's what you want to do. You and want to be able to keep them in their home absolutely, as long as Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, another beautiful thing about home health is we're there to provide assistance. So right. we're, we never, ever want to take away their ability to be able to do for themselves. Mm. You know, we want them mm -hmm. to rely on their own independence, but at the same time, we're there because, mm -hmm. um, as you just said, as we age and we get older, you know, there's just things that we can't do exactly. that we used to could do. Wow. We know that as we get older, I mean, <laughs> you know, you used to could just, you know, stay up till 4 a.m. Oh, we know and firsthand, <laughs> right? <laughs> And you can't, can't do, do those all-nighters anymore. <laughs> and it's just, hey, it's just age. So, wow. it's, you know, that's what we do. We wow. just go in to do those things. This is really exciting. We're going to talk more about personal care services and more about the services at Honeybee's Personal Care Health Service with Cindy Berry. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to be right back. Don't you go anywhere. <music> Welcome back to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow. And today we're talking to CEO of Honey Bee's Personal Care Health Services, Cindy Berry. And this is such an important topic in our society today is it's caring especially as we age and making sure we have a plan in place and this is the type of organization that we would reach out to to help us in that planning process and to provide that support system for us now i'm cindy i'm thinking as as we're talking about these services that there might be some who are really concerned about having strangers mm -hmm. in their home. Absolutely. So how do you deal with that? What kind of screening processes do you have in place for your employees? Well, we do um, criminal background checks. Um, we do drug screenings and also for all of the aides that come on board um, to actually work with the clients that are going to be going into the client's homes. On the day of orientation, they all take a test. Mm -hmm. It's a test that, you know, we ask, we just ask several questions mm -hmm. pertaining to the job that they're going to be doing because um mm -hmm. it helps me and my staff to gather a better better sense of understanding where you know the aids right. heads are so you know it kind of helps us out you know based on the questions and you, the answers that they give to the questions and there might be some you know employees that would not be a good fit absolutely and you probably and that's why we see do that. those come through right yeah, that's because you know, we ask certain questions and 
<laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> some of the answers were like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so you know right then that you would not want to put that Absolutely, person in someone's home. Because we're like, wow. <laughs> And wow. you've been doing this how long? <laughs> you know, that's what me and my administrator would say sometimes when we actually would look at the answers. Wow. Like, wow. This is what you think you're really supposed to do. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, those are some of the things that we have in place. But um <clears throat> another thing too is when you go out and you do the assessment, um, we always make sure we do a meet and greet because mm -hmm. we understand that every aid slash mm -hmm. caregiver is not always a great fit mm -hmm. you know now just, when you say meet and greet explain that a little bit more well the meet and greet is once you know a client calls in and says hey i need help i mm -hmm. need assistance with this and you actually set it up um to to go out and arrange a meeting mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. and so when you do that the meet and greet is bringing the aid mm -hmm. slash caregiver mm -hmm. that's going to actually be working with the client, you know, so it's an introduction. So if they can meet each other, you know, have a sense of, you know, if they, right. <laughs> yeah. you know, work, to, will work well work together. together. Um, and that's sometimes, good. believe it or not, you know, it's, it's important to do that because if for whatever reason the caregiver or the client says, hmm. You know, I was kind of looking for someone maybe a little older, a little younger. Mm -hmm. Then we have, you know, the opportunity to fulfill, you know, their needs. Wow. Um, that well, I like that idea of having that that meet and greet for they, them to. You can sort of see right off whether or not there's any chemistry there too, mm -hmm. um, whether that's going to work. Wow. So are all your services private pay services and how long can someone receive services? At the moment I am doing um, only private pay and it is short and long term. And the beautiful okay. thing that I have to explain to everyone um, about private pay is opposed to insurance. You know, there's mm -hmm. a process right. with insurance yes. because you You've got to get everything approved, right? right? So, but like, let's just say if you called and you had an emergency, something came up and you needed someone in your home to assist with your mother or mm -hmm. your father or uncle or whoever, when it's private pay, it's immediate. Mm -hmm. We don't mm -hmm. have to go through all of those, mm -hmm. you know. Approval processes. Exactly. Right. So that's the beautiful thing about private pay. Mm -hmm. If you need someone, you call up and, hey, um, I need someone in the next three hours because, you know, this is going on, I've, I've got work and I need someone in here to take care of my mom. Mm -hmm. So then we're able to come right away. And so how long can the services last? Is there any period of time? It can last as long as the client wishes or it can wow. be as short as the client wishes because we do short and long term. Wow. So it's just a simple phone call and yes. they can get things started. Absolutely. Um, now due to the employee aspect of it we mm -hmm. do like to work with clients that are at least going to have the aid in the home for three hours or more mm -hmm. so if that gives you, you yeah know, three hours a day or three, more three mm -hmm. hours or more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so if someone called you like today um and needed services or whatever would it take a couple of days maybe to get things started or um, we would basically set up an assessment, as I had explained to you okay. earlier, mm -hmm. and with that assessment, it gives me the opportunity or one of my staff members the opportunity to go out and actually meet with the client, mm -hmm. write down, you know, their care plan, what services are needed, what we're going to be assisting them with. Um, once that's done, if they say, hey... <laughs> I, I want you, you know, mm -hmm. so it can it can be effective so, right away. So is there any type of, um, you know, when you're doing the care plan, do you do anything from the patient to demonstrate whether or not they can do certain things or you kind of, once you get in there, determine well, that? mostly with um, going into the homes, I found that a lot of times they have case managers. Mm -hmm. So when, mm -hmm. when, when we get the UAI and things of that sort, mm -hmm. they pretty much, or even the family member, whoever has POA um, over our clients or mm -hmm. the person we're going to be providing assistance with, 
they normally and generally help us with you. telling mm -hmm. us this is what my mother's going to need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is what she can't have. So that's why the care plan is important because in that it, it lists all um, emergency contact, all medical information, which is important to the company as well as the aide that's going to be working, mm -hmm. you know, with the client. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, you know, we'll, we'll follow that care plan. So you do have then family involvement, you know, in the, in the process and feedback. Or Absolutely, whatever. unless it's an individual, like I said earlier, that just doesn't have anyone. Right. And then in cases like that, um, well, we become their family. So that means mm -hmm. that we're on board to actually, with their permission, of course, go with them um, to their doctor, actually speak one-on-one -on -one personally with their case manager so that we have, you know, all the information that we need to, you know, proceed, move forward just as a family member would. Wow. Uh, well, you know, this is really exciting and so very important. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to hear more about Honeybee's personal care health services. We'll be right back. Welcome back to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow and I'm talking to Cindy Berry who is the CEO of Honeybee's Home Health services so we are talking about personal care services and those services in the home and especially with our vulnerable population our elderly population and maybe uh, people who are disabled so i wanted to because I, I know you work with so many different mm -hmm. uh, clients um talk about some of the clients that you've helped i know you have some incredible stories oh my goodness believe <laughs> i do and yeah. i have a lot of people that i love even oh. even before i started honeybees um oh. You know, um, but I have several uh, different ones that we work with. Yeah. Um, I have one client, we're not going to say any names, of but course, right. just um, I, I pretty much go to her home and I assist her um, with wrapping her legs because she has lymphedema. Mm. Um, so I just have like different ones. Then I have some where I might just assist them to doctor's appointments. Um, or come into the home, like I said to you mm -hmm. earlier, and do some housekeeping, light housekeeping, right. um, and preparing meals, you know, mm -hmm. and things like that, um, that we do. Um, believe it or not, I had one client that was young, about 35 years I was going to ask you what's the youngest um, client you've had. Was that the youngest client you've had? Mm -hmm. So or far. <laughs> and then I would say my second one was um, 58. Wow, that's young to me. Yeah. Um, but, and what's the oldest well, client you've had? You've had ninety three. Oh wow. Ninety three. I've had a lot of them though. <laughs> I've I've had a lot of them. Wow. I've had a lot in their nineties, and I always say that I think God is doing that to me because um, I, I get so many of them, and I'm just like I, I'm very intrigued by older people because I just think that they're so blessed, you know, mm -hmm. especially when we're talking about someone who's now in their 90s right. and you see them and they still have a good mind and They're you see that wisdom of all those years absolutely yeah. and i just say okay god i see what you're doing because for the <laughs> longest for the longest time i used to be like nah i think i'm good with 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 you know not living to be <laughs> you know that age because i don't want to be depending on no one and so I'm sharing this with you because it just seems like God has always given me these clients that are in their 90s and they're healthy. Right. So I guess the message he wants me to get is that if I let you make it to 90, you have to trust me. You're going to be fine. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is that is so awesome. So what's next for you? I mean, you want to be, expand the business. Absolutely. So. I'm, I'm hoping to do that. And um I'm also hoping to go to school and, and get my degree mm -hmm. as an RN mm -hmm. because I think it'll be beneficial for my business if I'm an RN. 
But you've got a lot on your plate to think about. I do. But in the meantime, you're helping so many people and so many families. Yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, especially now, you know, you know, keep the person in the home for as long as you can. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting because sometimes I've, you know, I've traveled a lot around the world and gone to other cultures and they don't understand what a nursing home care. I mean, what do they need nursing homes for? And I'm talking to physicians, right, in these countries. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand, well, you know, in America, we, we use nursing care, you know, homes a lot. We Absolutely. use nursing facilities and they are like, well, don't they have support systems and families and people to take care of them? Things and, have changed here and, in America. Yeah, <laughs> things are not like that here, let me tell you. Absolutely, you're <laughs> and, absolutely and Even correct. when they're kids, you know, sometimes they're, you know, kids, so they're off doing their own thing, they have their own families, and they don't have time for mom and dad when they absolutely, get old. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I hate to say that, but that's just the way it is. You know, they're working on careers and everything. And, you know, you've got this elderly, you know, these parents that are aging and you don't have time. Now, you can pay yes. for the services for yes. them to get taken care of, yes. but you don't have time to be involved. And I see so much of that, Juanita, and that is the very reason why I was just mm -hmm. going back and forth with, I don't want that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because I see so much of it and I see so much loneliness, mm -hmm. you know, with the um, elderly community um, when they've reached a certain age, like you said, and... Your daughter or son is now too busy. Too busy. And that's <laughs> why I love my job because one thing I can tell you, we become very important to our You clients. are such a blessing for those individuals, especially the elderly, when there's nobody there and no support. And, and there's nothing that really bothers me more than knowing you know, this older person who's given so much all their life. Absolutely. And now they're being left alone. And, and we, we're pushing them aside. And, and our society does as a whole because we don't provide enough support for our elderly Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And I'm we've done that in our country. And because it's the hustle and bustle and, you know, opportunities yeah. and jobs yeah. and careers. But we and forget without them, you know. We wouldn't be we here. Wouldn't we be wouldn't be here. Exist, you know, and so, suppose they had done that yeah. to us as children, pushed and, us aside. You know, and they more, raised us for all these years. Absolutely. <laughs> and more important than that, I think we all should always be mindful that one day, too, if we live long enough, mm -hmm. we're going to be there. We're going to be uh, there. Yeah, karma has a way of, you know, kicking We're all going to be elderly <laughs> one day, and we will probably, most likely, want someone to be there for us yes. we don't nobody wants to be alone of course. whether you're young old or whatever nobody wants to be alone and so that's why i love my job because yeah. we do become family whether they have family or not the caregivers are very important mm -hmm. to individuals when you know um they lack that support mm -hmm. you know or having their family there, you know, when, when they need them. And I get it, you know, because sometimes we all have to work. We, we it's busy, <laughs> you know, so. So what would, what message would you have for that um, person who is really trying to do it all themselves and needs some extra help right now? What, what would you say to that person? Oh my gosh, person? I would say, please allow yourself to be helped. Mm -hmm. um, because you never know, you may, find you a new family member that you never even <laughs> thought existed out there, you know. But yes, we all need help sometimes. And, you know, sometimes I think it's just pride. Yeah. It it's pride, you know, because sometimes I found with the elderly community that sometimes you don't want to accept that you can't do what you used to could do. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really interesting because I was having this uh, conversation with someone on Facebook that I knew and they were talking about caregivers and you know it's difficult it's a hard job to be a caregiver you know a family member trying to take care of a family member and sometimes they don't want to ask for help to take care of that member but there's a lot of research and data out there that says now caregivers you know they they tend to you know get sick and have health issues because they're pouring everything into trying to do it all themselves heart attacks well this is the reason why I like home health again because Opposed to working in a nursing home, like you said, I'm going to tell you right now, that's draining. It's draining because you can be one caregiver and you've got 18 clients right. to yourself. Can you imagine? Right. So with home health, 
we get to cater to that client. Mm -hmm. I've worked with husbands and wives, so and still it's great because if I want to during um, bathing, if mm -hmm. I want to give you a bath that's going to last longer, I don't have to worry about being on a time. Mm -hmm. You know, because in nursing homes they actually put you on a time. So right. when I did my skill care for nurse for the nursing home, I was very sad at what I saw, the conditions, the treatments. So not to put nursing homes down right. because it's just like everything else in the world. Um, you know, you've got some great ones out right. there, but then yeah. you've got some out there that just don't right. do their best right. to make sure the clients that are residing there are priority. Mm -hmm. So I, I would definitely say to those family members who are being caregivers and they're trying to do it all themselves, don't be afraid to ask for help. Absolutely. Because organizations like Honeybees, that's why they're there, is to give you some relief, Absolutely. you know, to be able to just take a breath um, and, and get the help that you need to take care of your loved one. Absolutely. So um, call them. How can they reach you? Yes, um, I'm going to give you my phone number as well as my address. The address um, for Honeybees is 12695 McManus Boulevard, and that is Suite 1D as in Delta. We are in Newport News, Virginia, and the zip is 23602. And Honeybee's home number, um, office number that you can reach us at, I'm going to leave to. Um, the office number is 757-369-5222. Um, the business sale is 757-269-1790. Call us. We're, we're more than happy and more than willing. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you for taking the time to be on the show today. Yes, thank you for having me. It's such an honor. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for tuning in again to For the Common Good with Juanita. We'll see you next time.